Hi everyone, my name is Marie and in this video I'm going to show you how to make stitched images for your cards using stamps as templates. So what I'm going to be using today is this stamp set from Lawn Fawn for my image. I'm going to be using this flamingo right here. This is the Lawn Fawn Gnomes with Gnomes set. So um, I have chosen this flamingo and the first step of course in the process is to choose an image to work with. And uh, there are a couple of different things you might want to take into consideration when choosing an image. First of all, you want to make sure that you choose an image that will look um, kind of um, recognizable when you have just the outline uh, showing. And the way you can think about it is if you would stamp an image with just colored ink and not colored in, not paper piece it or anything, just have the outline showing. Um, what would really work well for that and look great. So I chose this flamingo and also another thing that you want to uh, look for is to use stamps that have less detail or the de detail that you can skip um, making. So for this flamingo here I'm going to be using it but I'm not going to be using these feather kind of um, lines in the middle nor the eye. I'm just going to be using the outline in the legs. When you have chosen your image then you need to make your template so I have a piece of just scrap paper here. This is just some scrap copy paper. And I'm going to be stamping my flamingo on this. And um, through trial and error and doing this a couple of times, I had now decided to use a light colored ink to stamp with. Now this is just a template. It won't be shown on your finished piece, so it doesn't really matter. But what I found with, this, with the light ink, it's easier to see my marks. So I have a pencil here and I'm just going to mark everywhere that I want a hole for my stitching. So you want to place, um, first of all, you want to place a hole in every intersection. And by that I mean, for instance, here where the legs meet the, um, meet the body. I want to place in here and one there. And then you want to place one in each kind of corner. Here's a corner, here's a corner, and there's a corner. And here's an in intersection, intersection. And then you want to place kind of evenly spaced holes all the way around the shape. Now I usually try to make my holes about an eighth of an inch apart. And I found that works well for me. And um, I'm going to be doing that for this, this image too. But what you want to um, kind of do a trial and error and um, test it out because some images that um, eighth of an inch won't work. Or if you have a little short line, you might need to make it, um, the stitches longer or shorter. Um, but for this image, I did find it to work with about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to mark like holes here and there and kind of mark them all the way around the body. And I have a finished piece here where I've marked everything and I've even pierced it. So as you can see, I marked all of my holes. And for the legs here, I want to show you the one leg is slightly longer than the other, but not um, by as much as of um, an eighth of an inch. So what I did was that I just, as you can see on this piece, I just made them the same length. So um, that would work for the stitches. So I have the finished uh, piece here. And as you can also maybe see, when I uh, start piercing in my template, I sometimes um, do a little adjustment so you can see here I've pierced sort of in between where I marked it and that's totally okay too. So when you have all of your stitches um, planned out and um, drawn down, I'm just going to use this as an example here. Um, what you want to do is that you want to take something to pierce on, a piercing mat or um, this is just some really thick fun foam that I cut down. So I use this as my piercing mat. Put your template down and use a paper piercer or even the needle and then you just pierce um, everywhere you marked or um, you know as I said sometimes you can make slight adjustments if you see that you need to do that. So we do it kind of like this and if you're good at this and measuring things out and you don't want to do this like mark it and then pierce it you can totally just try and pierce it all at once. And as I said, just do it a couple of times if it doesn't work out once. Try again and use the second piece of scrap paper and it doesn't really matter. So when I have all of the holes pierced, 
I want to transfer this to a more um, durable and uh, a, a template that I can use several times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of um, vellum. This is some thick vellum. And what I've done in advance here is that I've stamped it, the image once again using uh, black stays on ink onto the this piece. And what I, why I'm using vellum is because it's see-through. So it's really easy to place exactly where you want it on your project. So you can use vellum or again, you can just use a second piece of scrap white paper as I did, as I did here um, to make your um, finished template. But I'm going to use this vellum right now and I'm putting the vellum down and um, this piece on top. And because I already stamped this, I want to make sure that I line up the lines stamped lines on this with the stamped lines on this. So I'm just going to hold it up to the light and now it's lined up perfectly. I'm just going to use a piece of washi tape just to hold those two together. And then I'm going to pierce one more time through both layers. So I'm using the existing holes that I've already pierced in my um, scrap, paste, scrap piece of paper here. And I'm just going to pierce through them one more time, thereby piercing through the vellum underneath. If you want to, you can totally um, use the vellum as your first place to mark the holes and just skip the scrap paper altogether. Um, but I find it easier to use the scrap paper so that I can do um, a couple of tries if I need to and um, I don't always go to the vellum first. But you certainly can. So I'm just going to take off my preliminary template here and I have my really nice one right here and what I usually do is that I usually put a little hole just punch a little hole in the end here and I keep these templates that I make so that I can use them for different projects um, afterwards so the piercing for that is done and your next step will be to put it onto the project that you want to use now a couple of um, tips on this first of all you want to make sure that you're stitching in a thick cardstock um, pattern paper that are thin will not work for this because when you're piercing holes close like this and you're trying to stitch in it, if you have a really thin paper, it will rip between the stitches and you will have a hot mess. So um, make sure that you use a thick cardstock. Um, if you want to use pattern paper, you can back it with some cardstock and um, that will probably uh, work well. So then I'm just going to use my um, washi tape again if I can find it to tack that down and I'm going to pull in my, my piercing mat and once again and this time you are piercing from the template into your project so I'm just laying it down I'm using my paper piercer again again you can use the needle if you don't have this good so I'm just going to remove my template now and I have the piece ready to sew on or stitch on so for stitching I'm going to be using two colors of embroidery floss I'm going to be using this lovely bright pink and lovely bright orange. And what I've done is that I have decided to use a lighter, um, to do like a lighter uh, feel for it. So I have taken some strands of um, the embroidery floss and I have separated it so that I have only four threads. And embroidery floss comes with six threads. Um, so I don't know if you can see this on the camera at all. But this is from the from the package, and this is the one that I have. It's slightly thinner, so um, I have kind of more finer line. Um, you can totally do this the embroidery with all of the strands. I've done that before, and it's not a problem. But for this project, I want a slightly lighter look. So I'm using that, and I'm also gonna get out some um, just regular single-sided tape. So we're ready to start stitching and I find it helpful sometimes to have just uh, the stamped image next to you so that you can really see which lines, where the lines go so you don't um, put the needle and thread into the wrong holes or connect the wrong holes, to, holes together. So in, for this image I want to make sure that I only stitch the body with the pink and don't go out into the beak here or the legs. So I have that as a reference there. And I'm going to start my stitch from the back. 
I'm just gonna go up. I usually start in a corner if I can find one. So I'm gonna go up from the back and this little loose thread here I'm just gonna secure with some single-sided tape on the back. Um, so this is why I usually never stitch in um, just a, a single card base or I usually stitch into layers like this that I want to put on top of a card base because I want to hide all the uh, things that we will have on the back. It will not look as pretty on the back as it will on the front. So I usually stitch into a panel. So uh, I'm going to do a regular stitch first and then I'm going to start doing a back stitch and so the thing you want to do here is from the back you go up into the next hole like this pull the thread through and then you go down into the previous hole from the front so I usually try when I get up from the back not to catch the thread and um, because you're putting it into the same hole but try to go on the side of the thread but that's not uh, so important and then one more time up through the next hole from the back down through the previous hole from the front up through the next hole from the back and down through the previous hole from the front so you just want to continue this back stitching all the way around the image with this thread and then we're going to switch to the um, details with the um, orange thread uh, when we're done with the pink. So when you reach um, a couple of your last stitches here, you just keep on going with the back stitch. And on your very last stitch, you go up through the very first hole you used. And try not to catch the thread. It looks better if you can avoid it. And again, down through the previous hole. And you have um, one of your colors done in a second. So there's uh, the pink piece for the flamingo. So I'm just going to take the thread again and I'm just going to cut off the excess and again um, put it down with some adhesive single sided tape here. So I have that done and then I'm going to move on to my orange. So, uh, now I'm moving on to this color and I'm going to start with the legs. So I start up here with um, the first hole which is one of the holes that you've already sewn through so it can be a little bit difficult to find on the back but it's there so I'm starting there so there I have it my flamingo is all stitched and I'm just gonna tack down the last little piece of thread there and cut it off and there I have my finished stitched piece. So all it needs now is really sentiment and whatever kind of embellishment you want to use. And um, when you're putting this on a card, I would recommend, I usually do this, I usually put it on foam squares um, because this is a little bit of bulky on the back here. Uh, I think this turned out really great and as you can see from the stamped image I got this really fun shape. It kind of looks like, um, like a neon uh, sign kind of thing when I look at this, that's kind of fun. So this is the finished stitched piece. And here's a picture of the finished card that I made with my stitched piece. If you would like to see more of my cards, you can check out my blog, leguenta.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching.